Could the Penn State wide receivers actually surprise in 2024? According to Andy Kotelnicki, they certainly can, and I'm going to take his word for it. You are Locked On Nittany Lions, your daily podcast on the Penn State Nittany Lions, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm not ready to sit here and say that the wide receivers are a bright spot on the team, but they can be more of an asset as opposed to a liability. This is Locked On Nittany Lions. I'm your host, Zach Seiko. And thanks so much for making us your first listen and watch every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. Today's episode is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Check them all out today at NissanUSA.com. If you're not already Become an everyday or subscribe to Locked On Nittany Lines on YouTube, wherever you get your podcast. Let me know in the comments section what has intrigued you so far about Penn State football through spring practices. The second one that the media has been able to see, we'll discuss that. Some takeaways between Kotal Nicky, Franklin speaking to the media, what we were able to see in that 10 to 15 minute viewing window. Caden Proctor's situation over at Iowa. Yes, that is relevant to Penn State. And then another player is in the transfer portal for Mike Rhodes's squad on the basketball side of things starting with practice takeaways and i think the wide receivers are important to focus on because andy kotelnicki the offensive coordinator says they are going to surprise some people they're playing with a chip on their shoulders he's he's added there there is talent in this wide receiver room you add julian fleming who i i like a lot Again, we we go to practice once a week for 10 to 15 minutes, and you got to check out all the different uh, position groups that are in their individual drills. So they're not collectively practicing. They have the breakout sessions and go wide receivers, quarterbacks, and everything. But I like the way that Julian Fleming operates. I don't think it can be understated that he brings a different tone, different intensity, different leadership that Penn State has been lacking at wide receiver since Jahan Dotson went off to the NFL. Now, it, that's no disrespect to Parker Washington or anything like that, but that that overall, this, this bona fide leader, veteran, that understands what it takes to be a top-tier talent. No, he didn't have all this ample playing time and the stats up at Ohio State, but he knows what it takes to be in a top wide receiver room, and now he's bringing that over to Penn State. So that influence that has been lacking for a little bit that can help actually, yes, a Keandre Lambert Smith, who is a veteran in his own right, who can help a Trey Wallace, a Liam Clifford, and Amari Evans, who we're still waiting for to break out. This is why the wide receivers will be better in 2024, because Julian Fleming has that influence that was missing. And, and the way that I, I like what I've seen at Fleming at practice, he, he looks like a number one wide receiver to me. It's the intensity, it's the speed. And I'm not saying that the other wide receivers are dogging it in drills, but there's another level to it that the wide receivers are going to have to match or Julian Fleming is going to leave them in the dust and it's just going to be himself and the wide receiver room will be lacking, right? We've heard the phrase that iron sharpens iron. And then there's that chip on the shoulders that Kotal Nicky mentioned in that post-practice press conference that yes, they need to be motivated because I criticize them on this podcast and rightfully so. More people should have been talking about how bad the wide receivers were in 2023. And for some reason, all that criticism has been passed off to Drew Aller. Yes, it is Drew Aller's fault that he doesn't have enough targets to throw to in a Penn State offense to go along with suspect and bad play calling by a former offensive coordinator as well. So those two elements together, I, I like what they have at wide receiver. They're going to be more aligned to an I, Jul, Do I think Julian Fleming's going to light the world on fire, light the Big Ten on fire? Absolutely not. Like in regards to what, a thousand yards, a, you know, within reason, right? 70 catches, anything like that. No, 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 no. That's not the point because you can distribute the football a lot of different ways to Singleton and Allen, to Fleming, to Tyler Warren, who I'm going to get to in a second. But Fleming will be able, I, is it crazy to think that he could get 50 receptions, 600 yards, five touchdowns? You need that. You need somebody that can just focus the attention, that defenses have to pay attention to. So forget the stats for just a moment. I want another target in Penn State's offense 
I want to see that where defenses actually have to focus because they had no respect for the wide receivers. They said, we're going to play single coverage. We're going to play press coverage. We're going to put our safeties down into the box so we take away your running game. And that is why the offense didn't do as well as it did. It's that simple change of, we dare your wide receivers to get open in single coverage. They never did. And defenses were allowed to do whatever they wanted. Good defense. And bad defenses, right? You can get an 80-yard touchdown against Indiana. You can't do that against Michigan and or Ohio State. And honestly, Rutgers too, right? Rutgers had a really good pass defense. So that's what I want to see. More respect from opposing defenses. And Julian Fleming can provide just that. I've already talked about Tyler Warren a little more. Uh, as far as what I think he's going to be able to do, because he's another one of those assets in the offense. And I, you know, he's in the passing game, right? He's a tight end, but he is in the same conversation with the wide receivers because he is a passing target. But Warren's going to be Drew Aller's favorite offensive weapon. Julian Fleming coming in, still having to build that chemistry. And it's nice that he's here now and not coming in in the summer session and building like, you know, like a Dante Cephas. Tyler Warren's already been there. This is the third year that Warren and Aller get to work together on some sort of level because Aller's in his third year of the program as well. But Warren, when we've listened to Theo Johnson say this, other people and pundits around the country at the national level describe Warren as the best kept secret in college football. NFL draft scouts start to you know leak information that he could be one of the first tight ends taken in next year's 2025 NFL draft. That is saying something. I fully believe that Tyler Warren will set tight end records for single season, for total career, right? Tyler Warren has the capability of doing that. Andy Kotelnicki is a tight ends guy. That's his background, tight ends and offensive line. So he's already going to be a little more biased there. I'm not saying that it's going to be a totally tight end offense, but Warren will break records and be Drew Aller's favorite target in the passing game. I like what I've seen out of Andrew Rapley at two. Again, there's just some select drills, but the intensity, right? It's there. It's there. Andrew Raplia, I think, could become that second tight end. And this is a good problem to have. Khalil Dinkins' spot as that next man up at the tight end spot is not a given. It is not safe. Has he caught some touchdown passes from Drew Aller? Absolutely. But Andrew Raplia going into his second season and hearing positive feedback from other fellow teammates of his after practice or after games, right? Raplia is definitely an up-and-coming prospect. I know there's Luke Reynolds and there's Joey Schlaufer. Don't forget about them, but Raplia certainly stood out to me at practice. This was something else that I, I don't have anything to report here. Again, this is a podcast to talk about what I see. And what I did not see was Jackson Smolik or Katron Allen. Okay, so we get 10 to 15 minutes. Maybe those guys just weren't available or maybe they had something to do with class, right? They're, they're, but what I saw was Smolik was not taking quarterback reps and it was Nicholas Singleton and then Quinton Martin, the true freshman, taking that second set of handoffs from the quarterbacks in running back and quarterback running back drills. But my takeaway from that is not, not necessarily about Smolik, but about Ethan Grunkmeyer. Ethan Grunkmeyer can sling the football. And, and I, and I liked what he was doing, good posture, good mechanics. True freshman, if I'm Jackson Smolik, I am worried about the possibility of Ethan Grunkmeyer taking that third spot on the depth chart. I know Smolik has been in the program, but Grunkmeyer was, is now a top 10 quarterback in this recruiting class for 2024, has shown that it, there isn't this, I guess, overall talent gap that you would naturally as, expect. Sure, does he have a smaller build at this point in time because he still hasn't played any college football? Yes, but he enrolled early. And just seeing him at practice and the amount of reps that he's getting, I think it's a very good possibility that Ethan Grunkmeyer does become the third quarterback on the depth chart behind Drew Aller and then behind Bo Rabula. Quint Martin also looked really good. It is nice to have that extra insurance. You have Katron Allen and Nicholas Singleton splitting reps as that one-two punch, that dynamic duo on the backfield. But then the Quint Martin, you know, when you lose a Trey Potts in the NFL, that is a big deal. That is a very big deal, and Penn State's been fortunate that there have not been any injuries to the running back spot. But Quentin Martin coming in, I think he's going to be that next superstar running back for Penn State. Singleton and Allen will move on to the NFL after this season, and then Quentin Martin takes over. He is the type of player to be that. And now he will try, maybe split reps. We'll see what the plan is, but he can handle bell cow responsibilities 
if he had to. And he's got receiving capability too. So he's that all around true athlete, true freshman. But I'm very excited for what Martin's future holds. Zachy Wheatley's been brought up by James Franklin once again. And there's that battle and was at, James was asked about it, the battle at the nickel cornerback spot. But it ties into Zachy Wheatley. And he's saying that the light just the light has switched on for him. Something's turned on upstairs for him, that it's all clicking together now. And that's just the talent's always there. The potential's always there. The former turnover king uh, through spring practices and everything else. But now Penn State has some flexibility to where if the cornerbacks or the nickel cornerback spot, right, isn't a sure thing, there's a lot of uncertainty at that cornerback spot despite the talent. A.J. Harris, Jalen Kimber brought in, Cam Miller up and coming, right? Zion Tracy, all those guys, Elliot Washington. There's a lot of names there, but they have not played a whole lot of college football actively, right? They've been on the team, but they have not played like they have not been multi year starters like the three of them were this past season. Aquan Hardy, Kalen King, Johnny Dixon. That is tough to replace. But this combination of KJ Winston and Jalen Reed. And now Zach Key Wheatley, that is a big deal. You can have three safeties on the football field. That is okay. Those guys, yes, safeties are more naturally your coverage guys in zone. But what separates them from everybody else is the fact that they are also really good in man coverage. So you can put Jalen Reed in the slot and he can act as that nickel cornerback. It doesn't matter. They will get the best defensive backs on the field. And I anticipate with Tom Allen coming in that there will be a little more 4-2-5. It also has to do with the competition. You're going to see Washington. Eventually, you will see Oregon. But in the first season, UCLA, Washington, USC, where you are going to have to run more 4-2-5 as opposed to when you played Ohio State and Michigan this past season and you needed that heavy, right, that 5-2 front defense uh, to stop a run game or try to limit it anyway. So those are takeaways from that second practice we were able to view. And then over in the Big Ten Conference, it is all fun and games. It, some people are going to find it funny, like, oh, ha, ha, Iowa lost its prospect. He transferred in, allegedly doesn't have to pay back any, any of the NIL money he received, and now he's going back to Alabama. It's all fun and games until it happens to Penn State. We'll talk about this Caden Proctor situation on the other side of this break. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest. Just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. How about the Auburn Tigers? They can be described only as a pathfinder. They've been thrilling to watch, and they've really created a lane for themselves after claiming the top spot in the SEC Conference. As they knocked off the Florida Gators in the SEC Tournament Championship, they're set to make a run in the NCAA Tournament. Take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop all those and more right now at NissanUSA.com. That is NissanUSA.com. And today's episode is sponsored by FanDuel, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sportsbook, FanDuel. And right now, new customers can get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That is $200 in bonus bets to use on point spreads, money lines, totals. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. That is FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN all day long on your TV? Do you have to turn down the volume with all of that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all of the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube and now on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Caden Proctor, some people are familiar with him, top tackle in that recruiting class, went to Alabama, started as a true freshman. Nick Saban retires, goes to, and he's from Iowa, transfers back to Iowa, and then he's there for what, two, three months? And then he transfers back 
to Alabama. This is okay, right? You know, Penn State, you know, I'm I'm glad to see Iowa, you know, to kind of take a, a punch to the gut here at just as much as anybody else, right? The Hawkeyes with the, you know, the fan base doing what they did in 2021, the way that they, I'm glad that Penn State pummeled them in this whiteout game the past season in 2023. But this is this is a more of a not necessarily an Iowa thing, and I want to relate it to Penn State because yes, it's funny when other when it happens. It's not it's not really funny, but it's ironic when it happens to other programs. In the same breath, uh, Penn State fans should kind of consider the program lucky that they don't have to deal with a situation like that, and that's a testament to what James Franklin and the coaching staff at Kraft do, the way that they run this football program. That it's not. Open free agency. We're going to get whatever plug and play player out of the transfer portal. They want players that are committed to Penn State, the institution, to James Franklin and the coaching staff, and then becoming better young men going off to the NFL and then starting careers after their playing career in football. Not paper chasers, bag chasers, somebody just trying to collect the biggest check that they can and jump into the transfer portal. I've already harped on the NCAA being, you know, toothless. They have no backbone, no spine. So Caden Proctor going into the portal, transferring home to Iowa, leaving because what? He's getting more NIL money now from Alabama. So he transfers back to play under Kalen DeBoer. That's not a Caden Proctor thing. That is a problem with the system that the NCAA has fostered now because they don't want to go to court anymore. The NCAA is truly one of the weakest organizations. I don't think it should exist anymore. And I, I don't know if I should start counting the days down when the Big Ten and the SEC look at each other and say, we can start our own thing and we don't have to be at the mercy. Well, they're not at the mercy of the NCAA. That's the thing. The NCAA... Ha- it as this has this guidance, this passive guidance that they don't even enforce. So it's an element of the system. They're not going after schools anymore. They're not investigating. They're not going to start any new court cases here. So I don't blame Caden Proctor for going to Alabama, transferring to Iowa, transferring back to Alabama to get to maximize his NIL value. It is scummy at the end of the day. Do I agree with it? No. But Caden Proctor can do it because nobody's enforcing anything. Why can't he say he that is absolutely a sanctionable type of offense? He needs to sit out for a year, maybe two. I don't know. But he certainly if if the NCAA was run right, was run well, Proctor would not play at Alabama this upcoming season, would have to sit out or he'd be at Iowa because there would be consequences for his actions. And that is the NCAA's fault. It's not Caden Proctor. But this is going to continue until the NCAA steps up to the plate and actually gets serious about being a governing body to college sports. When it is, it's scummy. It's trashy. You can contact players directly, offer them NIL, because this is tampering at the highest ordinance. Why is Alabama in contact with with an Iowa player? When he is currently playing for the Hawkeyes, getting ready to suit up for spring practice, and oh, second transfer portal window, Alabama let me know that they have more money for me, so I'm going to go back and play for the Crimson Tide. Alabama should be sanctioned for tampering. Caden Proctor should be penalized and have to sit out for a football season. Going back to how this affects Penn State, I'm glad it doesn't. I'm glad it doesn't. Julian Fleming. A.J. Harris, Nolan Rucci, Jalen Kimber. Imagine if any of those guys pulled a stunt like this. Penn State fans would be up in arms. Media, uh, this talk show, would be talking about it because of how ridiculous it is. So people say, well, Penn State, you know, Penn State isn't active in the transfer portal as much. They go and get complimentary pieces that they know because they built relationships. What all what if all these players have in common? AJ Harris. Jalen Kimber to an extent, right? He's a veteran, so it's been a it's been a while since Penn State was able, you know, was in contact recruiting him, right? Because they do things the right way when it comes to this transfer portal stuff. But Julian Fleming, Nolan Rucci, those guys had Penn State down final two, and they chose Wisconsin, they chose Ohio State. That's fine, but those strong relationships that they had prior with James Franklin and Penn State pay off here 
And you don't have to say, well, we can offer you all this NIL money. No, it's about the prior relationship and rebuilding it. And then you don't have players stabbing you in the back when they say they're going to commit and then they leave a couple months later. So James Franklin, Pat Kraft, the coaching staff, all these elements together operating the program this way, Penn State will not have to worry about a situation like that where a high-profile player comes in and then just immediately transfers out. I know Storm Duck, I, I know, but I'm talking, Caden Proctor would have been a real difference maker for Iowa. He was going to be starting left tackle. He probably would have been, if he was an all-conference freshman at Alabama, he certainly would have been all-conference in the Big Ten as well. Storm Duck's a little bit different because Johnny Dixon was better than him at the end of the day, and Storm Duck was upset that he did not start and that he was not going to be guaranteed a starting spot. So he can transfer out, that's fine. But I'm talking about a true difference maker that will contribute. Penn State will not have to worry about that. I still hate the NCAA. I hate that there are no restrictions here on NIL, particularly the transfer portal, and something's going to be done. Eventually, you will not recognize the college football landscape whatsoever. The Big Ten and the SEC will feel confident enough as they continue to add teams. They will create this mega conference almost similar to the NFL, where they have the SEC and the Big Ten, and they create this, what, 40-school dynamic, and then have two conferences, they play each other in a playoff system, it'll be all entertaining and fun, but then they keep all the money, and then they don't have to listen to anything the NCAA says, and that will go towards basketball and everything else as well. But the NCAA needs to take a look in the mirror and see if they want to survive, they're going to have to create some regulations to fix NIL in the transfer portal because it's out of control. And speaking of the transfer portal, Penn State men's basketball lost another player, Demetrius Lilly. I like the Lilly. I like him a lot. I was kind of hoping that he would be back on the roster next season. He's not. Let's talk about the ramifications of this coming up after the break. And today's episode is also sponsored by Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports. From live games to highlights to in-depth analysis, Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into an existing TV and it provides access to millions of movies, TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have Fire TV. Fire TV recently created the Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us here at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive into all of the game analysis, all the highlights, more to keep up to date with all the latest in the world of sports. March Madness, NBA, Major League Baseball, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, and cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should trust me on this. To learn more, visit amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. That's amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. Remember, if you're not already, become an everyday or subscribe to Locked On Nittany Lions on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts for the latest conversations around your favorite Penn State sports teams. Talking more than just football on this show, wrestling, men's basketball, recruiting. We talk some men's hockey as well. All of that more is here on Locked On Nittany Lions. And in this final segment, Penn State is focusing on recruiting. They got some players in the transfer portal. We knew yeah, Kanye Clary was going to go into the portal. We knew about that. And then Favor Iray, Broggy Goodmanson, and now Demetrius Lilly, who was easily the most improved player on Penn State's team. Out of all the Penn State players that were on the roster the previous year, Kanye Clary, right, Evan Mahaffey, Kevin Kebajai, all those players that were from that class, Demetrius Lilly was easily the most improved out of any of them. Yes, I know Kanye Clary scored 16 points, but he didn't improve his defense. I'm talking about overall game, Demetrius Lilly, and then being hurt down the end of the stretch of the season. didn't uh, Definitely did not help Penn State in the long run because you needed that depth behind Caduce Wahab. It's tough when you only have one available big man, and he's got to play, what, 40 minutes? That's difficult to do, and Lilly provided that. Lilly's value went a long way. Why he's in the transfer portal, I anticipate that Mike Rhodes and the staff had an honest conversation with him 
that with Miles Goodman coming in, true freshman, who's six foot ten, probably not finished growing either, just needs to add some weight so that he can have the body to sustain a Big Ten season. They're going to go back into the transfer portal to add depth of that position and probably find a quality player. And they probably said to Lily, "Hey, if you're expect we you know we appreciate what you've done. We think you've gotten so much better. However, it's still not good enough to be a consistent starter." on this team going into next season. So I think Mike Rhodes, I think Demetrius Lilly and Mike Rhodes looked at it. Mike Rhodes wants to upgrade the position. It doesn't mean that Demetrius Lilly didn't contribute anything and wouldn't have contributed anything, contributed anything next season. However, it's still left to be seen what his role would have been. Probably still off the bench, probably still a backup center. Who knows if he would have been the third string with how good Miles Goodman could be and if they go get a veteran five out of the transfer portal as well, that really would have complicated things. And Lily going into his third season of basketball can be a starter somewhere else, can be a starter in a mid-major. He can, but I think his potential has been reached. But he's certainly a valuable player and someone I would have liked to have seen come off the bench another season for the Nittany Lions as Goodman developed and then depending on who they get in the transfer portal. I don't think Penn State is finished losing players in the transfer portal as well. In my opinion, I would not be surprised if Jameel Brown is in a similar situation. May I remind you that Demetrius, Lilly, Kanye, Clary, any of these guys are not Mike Rhodes players. They were not recruited by Mike Rhodes to come to Penn State, so they have no affiliation with him. They can go carve their own path, and that's fine. I don't think they fit Mike Rhodes' vision anymore for the most part. Jameel Brown entered the transfer portal last season was convinced by Mike Rhodes and company to come back. At, at this point in time, when this episode is up, wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube, Jameel Brown's not going to be in the transfer portal. But in the coming days, I would not be surprised if and when he is because he can go other places. Does he want to be a rotational player? Former high-end four-star out of the state of Pennsylvania, right? He was really good. Played alongside Derek Lively. He still has a good amount of potential, but I don't think his future's at Penn State anymore. He will, and, and this class is going to disperse. That was a Micah Shrewsbury class, and it makes sense at the end of the day. Mike Rhodes is going to get his own players. He's got four true freshmen. Remember, he doesn't have one or two true freshmen coming in. He has four true freshmen that are going to contend for minutes off the bench. Maybe even a player like a Miles Goodman does start at the end of the day. It depends what they do in the transfer portal. But in this day and age, you can revamp your roster however you want. and. With the open scholarships, Penn State can go get contributing pieces like it did the last cycle and this cycle as well. So don't be surprised if and when Penn State has another player, or maybe even two, going to the transfer portal and Mike Rhodes has to rebuild this team going into 2024 and 2025. That's going to do it for this edition of Locked On Nittany Lines. We'll have some wrestling recaps as well. The NCAA tournament has started out in Kansas City. And some surprising losses, some expected victories, right? And we'll have recaps with the corresponding days and the sessions here on Locked On Nittany Lions. And don't forget, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Now it's available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On plus the national shows covering each and every league. Find Locked On Sports today, now available on YouTube and the free Fire TV channels app. For more Penn State content, football, men's basketball, wrestling, recruiting, you name it, subscribe to Locked On Nittany Lions and keep it right here for more Penn State content around your favorite team.